today we're going to talk about email marketing. Which Yay, my favorite. We love, and it's something that can apply to both DPMs that have practices and our exhibitor family that are trying to, trying to sell products or services. That is so, true. Yes. Since you are the marketing expert, Yay. I'm going to fire away at you with questions. Go for it. Okay. So to start us off, why do you think email marketing is important and relevant in 2020? Um, anyone who has buying power uses email. So I know I have a professional email address that I use for work, obviously, like most people. And then um, I've got my personal email. And my personal email, yes, it gets bogged down with a lot of promotional content from companies that I may or may not want information from, but they're still getting to me. And it's my choice, obviously, if I can, if I opt in or if I continue to allow them to send me information. So um, anyone who has buying power has an email list, whether it be professional or personal. Um, and then another thing is that it's relatively inexpensive. So anybody who is marketing, um, is always going through their budget and they're trying to think of ways that they can get the most ROI for you know as little as few dollars spent as possible and email marketing really is the number one way to do so to make a huge impact on a small budget so and it used to be when social media marketing really became popular, that was kind of the key one that people were like, okay, well, I can use Facebook and all of my followers are gonna see my content. Well, unfortunately, that's not true anymore. Facebook, like any business, has caught on to a business model. And now that they have so many users using their platform, they can charge people to actually advertise. So not that they weren't doing that before, but they've reduced the amount of organic viewership on any sort of post. So when you think of your Facebook feed and you're like, oh, well, I've got 2000 followers. When you make a post, less than 5% of your followers are actually seeing that post unless you've invested some sort of media budget into it. So the cheaper ways to market to a broad audience are not cheap anymore, you have to spend money. And email marketing is consistently inexpensive. Um, most programs utilize the, the size of your list. And even if you have a list that has around, let, let's say you've got 5,000 email, emails in your database, you're still probably looking at um, potentially less than $100 a month. And you can send as many emails as you want within that month, again, each program, each email service um, is different, but on average, you can send thousands of emails a month for less than $100. So a couple things then to just kind of wrap that up in, is that everyone has an email address. Email advertising is relatively inexpensive and you have constant communication with a database of people that you know are interested in your product or service. Yeah, a hundred percent agree. You hit it right on there. Social media is uh, fun and we believe that you should be on social media, but be careful because you don't own social media. You don't own your followers. You don't own that content. Anything that you put out there, that could go away. And we've seen social media platforms fail. MySpace. Vine and your email list, you actually do own that list. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's just a little bit safer for you to do. And also Sarah talked about um, ROI, email marketing being relatively inexpensive. The latest figures I've seen are something like a $42 return on investment for every dollar spend. Um, obviously it varies by the industry, but that's a huge return on investment and email marketing is not not expensive so and when email marketing first started everyone compared it to direct mail because social media marketing wasn't really available and we didn't compare it exactly to um, advertising like on radio and television because it was still mail and that's completely changed so 
sometimes people will still compare email marketing to direct mail. And if you're comparing those two channels, then again, the cost factor is just enormous. Postage is obviously not getting any any lower, and printing for postcards, or even just a standard letter, gets more expensive every single year. So anything that you can do digitally is going to save you dollars just because you don't have to physically hold it. But the great thing about email marketing compared to a lot of these other channels is the tracking. The, the reports that you can get from email marketing are so much more extensive than even knowing how many people came to your website. Obviously, if you're looking at Google Analytics, you don't know exactly who that person was. And, and that's okay, we need that privacy. <laughs> but, um, you can only see an IP address. When you're looking at your email reports, let's say something doesn't convert into an actual sale or uh, whether if you're, if you're a vendor, a sale, or if you're a DPM, a patient, a patient booking, you can still see which individuals clicked on the information, which individuals, A, opened the information, who clicked on it. So you're starting to get a general idea of which members of your database are actively engaged in the information that you're sending. And this can help you segment then for future email marketing or if you've got something, a, a specific offer. And maybe you don't want to offer it to your entire database. You only want to offer it to those that you know are going to convert. That type of information is really going to help you um, just figure that out and then be able to capitalize on it. Yeah, so, okay, if you are just starting out, maybe you're starting in a new market, you wanna reach a new audience, or you're just starting email marketing altogether, how do you begin to start a list? So when I have a new client, this is always the biggest struggle. They don't want to start email marketing. It's not that they don't want to start email marketing, it's just there's nowhere to start because they literally have no list. And your paperwork should always have a spot for email email address capture. If they don't fill it in, they don't fill it in. But you, it's kind of one of those things you're going to miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So you have to at least ask for it. Um, so, and, and that's just, in, again, that's in any business. When you go to, if you go to American Eagle to buy a pair of jeans, it's almost like they, it's required for you to give your email address. And I always find myself kind of stumbling and bumbling when I don't want to give it to them because I, you know, there are some things I've just had enough of. I, I, I go to American Eagle, I'll buy my jeans. I don't need you to email me about every single promotion that you've got going on. That's my choice but they're always gonna ask me for my email address when I check out. And so, and it doesn't mean I'm not gonna stop shopping there. Just because they ask me a question, I'm not gonna be like, oh, how dare they ask me for my email marketing or my email address. So, um, so ask, simply ask your patients or, and then on the vendor side, ask your DPMs, you have to have that information. Um, on the vendor side, it's a little bit easier in that sense because a lot of transactions don't take place without that. Um, it's not like we've got pop-up shops like Walmart and Walgreens where you've got DPMs just coming in to your brick and mortar building and placing orders. So business for the vendor side is very digital. It does take place via email. So um, for vendors, when you have a customer, it's likely you've already obtained their email address in some way or form ahead of time anyway. So that's, but before they're a customer, how do you get their email address? Well, it's just like anything um, in terms of new age, new age marketing, kind of business 2.0 marketing, and is content. When we first started building websites and we started thinking about search engine optimization, one phrase constantly came to the surface consistently and that was content is king and that is true across all platforms including email marketing so you have to provide content when i think about the times i've given up my email address it's because i want content there's some sort of information some sort of nugget of um whatever it might be it might be weight loss information or it could be something you know that's just for my personal life it could be information um for my professional life, if I want new information on how to create new videos, I want I want that. And so if you have a PDF that tells me a step-by-step -step list on how I can create a new video for social media, I'm gonna give you my email address for that. 
So you guys as medical professionals, whether you're DPMs or even vendors, you have so much information. And a lot of times we get really scared to provide that information. We wanna hold it really close to our chest, whether because we, we just think it's really valuable and it, it's, we're scared to just give it out for free or we're afraid com competitors are gonna take that information and you just it to their benefit. It's okay. The information needs to get out there they're gonna come to you. If you've got it, they're gonna come to you for it. And so put the information that you have out there for people to use, but don't give it away for free. You don't have to charge money for it, but the cost of the transaction is their email address. And now you've given them an excuse to be like, okay, this is information I know I want. I'm definitely whatever my email address, not a big deal. I can opt out later if I want to. Hopefully they won't. But again, those are certain things that you can't control, but you've given yourself an opportunity to start a relationship and a dialogue by providing content that is extremely valuable. So I just always go back to content is king. Um, and then the question I usually get after that is, okay, I have the content created. If I don't have their email address, how am I gonna get it to them? So it's kind of like, um, you're telling me I'm going to get their email address by providing this content, but how do I even make them aware of the content? Well, that's where things like social media marketing are super beneficial. You can do, um, you can do a post on, on Facebook and yes, you will get some of your organic followers to see that information, but this is where you may have to spend a little bit of marketing dollars to boost a post or to advertise content and say, I have this information, um, if, you know, if you want it badly enough, click here for the free PDF. And when they click there, they have to provide their email address to, in order for you to deliver that. So will it sometimes come down to you spending a little bit of money in order to build that list? Absolutely but it will pay for itself a hundred times over once you have that information. Um, and then I don't want to digress completely, but when we're talking about spending money and email marketing, purchasing lists, please don't do it. The lists that people sell you are never what they pretend that they are. They act like they're clean. They act like they're up to date. Um, they never work out and the email marketing providers like for example constant contact or mailchimp um, they have certain programs in place to um, be able to identify they, they can tell based on how many um, bounces your emails get by how many people unsubscribe when you purchase a list your bounce rate is going to go through the roof your unsubscribe rate is going to go through the roof constant contact and mailchimp for example, are going to notice that and they're going to put your account on pause. And then you have to have this awkward conversation with the customer service rep and say, yeah, I violated your policies and I purchased a list and I used it. It's just, it's not good practice and it's not going to serve you anyway. So the best way to go about it is to use organic methods and use content as king to build a true list to people that you know are actively engaged with the information that you have. Right, and so um, those content is king things is like checklists, little free guides, little mini eBooks, and they're called opt-ins or lead magnets that you post throughout your website and um, in your existing emails. And then in order for them to get that, like Sarah said, they have to put in their email address and then you've got it. So they've opted in. Um, also, and we're not really talking about websites and ads or anything, but if you do have an ad on a website, like for instance, we have advertisers on our website and they link to something, make sure they link to a landing page that collects their data that says, thanks for visiting our site in order to get your free sample or get this free resource or whatever enter your email address here. That's right. the only way you're really gonna see a return on those ad dollars that you're spending. Just completely That's unrelated to email marketing, but a good way to capture email. Yeah, and, and I wouldn't even say it's completely unrelated to email marketing because with all of this, it's a, it's a system, it's a process. A lot of times 
we look at marketing and we say, I want to attribute this transaction to a specific marketing tactic. Unfortunately, most of the time that's not possible because one thing leads to another. If they've already kind of have your brand and the product in mind and they know they want your product and they see the ad and they click on it, that could create an immediate transaction. But most of the time, you're stepping them through a process. And if they click on the ad, I say, okay, my goal is this ad needs to be so good that it's going to motivate them to actually click. Think about how many ads you just swipe through and you don't actually click. What makes you stop? So, A, you're gonna want to make the person stop on your ad, read it, be persuaded enough to click. That may or may not result in a transaction. But like Ann said, if anything, if you don't get anything in terms of monetary value, get the email address. And the only way you can do that is by sending them to a landing page that has a form where they, ha you know, if whatever offer you're, you're providing, they cannot get it unless they give the email address. Because if they don't give you money, they have to give you something. And if you're only, if all of your advertisements are sending people to your homepage, that's like saying, I want to go to the mall, I need a pair of shoes, and you've just thrown me into the front door. Now I've got all these other stores to get distracted by. I want to be, you know, time travel, like I want to be drop shipped directly into the shoe store to buy the specific pair of shoes that I'm looking for from that ad. If you send me to your homepage, you've just dropped me in the middle of the mall and instead of going directly to the store. And so put the people directly where they need to be based on the content that they just clicked on previously. And it takes planning. Unfortunately, you can't do any of these programs without plotting it out ahead of time and going through the steps as a buyer and saying, okay, first I'm gonna click here, where does that lead me? If I go here, what is the likelihood I'm just gonna bounce off the site, maybe get distracted by something else or get bored. Um, that Those are things we want to eliminate. So take the time, whether it's email marketing or um, any sort of advertising, any sort of marketing process, you need to go through that process of planning and the buying process because um, you'll find there are a lot of holes usually in your current kind of off the cuff procedure. I love that you use the analogy of shoe shopping at the mall. <laughs> you hate shoes. <laughs> <laughs>